Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, As-sayamu jannah fala yarfas, wala yajhal. Your fasting is your shield, so let not speak indecently and let not be ignorant. Fasting is your shield, as long as you do not speak indecently and offensively. <clears throat> let me ask you this question, if someone speaks offensively during the fast, is his fast broken? If someone swears, fight, quarrels verbally during his fast, is his fast broken? No. Apparently, the fast remains intact, but he forfeits the reward of his fast. He loses the spirit of fasting, the good that fast should bring about of creating taqwa, of refining that person, of making that person a good human being, of acting as a shield and protecting that person from the wrath and displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world as well as in the hereafter. All of these protections, all of these benefits have been forfeited. The only thing that remains is that this person remains hungry and thirsty. That's it. And the obligation of fasting is dropped. So Prophet sallallahu said, your fast is your shield, but it will work as a shield, it will remain as a shield as long as you keep it intact. So do not engage yourself in rude, lewd, and indecent and vulgar speech. Do not speak indecently. And of course, this is one of the most noble teachings of Islam, that we should refine our tongue. Islam is not only about pilgrimage, prayer, and charity. Islam is not only about worshipping Allah, recitation of the Quran, prostrating and bowing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is also about being mindful of the right of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means speaking properly and speaking decently. Don't be abusive. Do not swear at each other. This is not the mark of a believer. Sahaba used to say about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lam yakun fahish wa la mutafahish. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither the one who speaks rudely, and he was neither the one who would simulate rude speech, who would imitate, affected, simulate rude speech. What does mutafahish mean? Simulating a rude speech. You know some people, no offense to anyone, this happens in Pakistan as well. Some of my friends are going through that kind of a habit as well. Some people, it's just their habit. So even if they want to comment on how cold the weather is, they will begin their sentence with number of expletives, and then the fact that the weather is cold comes along. So it's star hyphen, star hyphen, and then it's cold. So it's star hyphen, star hyphen, hot. Even if they're feeling, feeling good, they will say it's good number of expletives, and then they will say they are feeling good. So they have become naturally fahish. They have become naturally rude, lewd, indecent, and vulgar in their speech. But then some other people, which alhamdulillah, which, which we are majority of us, alhamdulillah, we are not naturally fahish. We are not. But then what happens? Gang mentality. You know, when he's alone, he's okay. As long as he is with the rest of the people, with the rest of the gang, just in order to fit in, to be one of the group member, to be one of the gang member, he will become rude. Nine people, if nine people are rude, why should I be the one try to be a good kid? So he's not rude, he's not fahish naturally, but he will try to act rude in order to fit in. He's not bad, but he's acting bad in order to fit in. Your language, your speech, the vocabulary you use is the reflection of your personality. And that's what Allah tells us over and over again in the Quran. He said, Kulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum. Say an upright thing. And what is the purpose of saying an upright thing? What is the benefit? Yuslih lakum a'malakum. Your deeds will become right and pure. When you say the right things, your deeds will become right and pure. Your tongue has an impact on the limbs of your body, on the organs of your body. Imam Tirmizi relates a hadith in his sunan that every single day, the organs of our body, the limbs of our body, they bleed, they plead before our tongue. And they say to our tongue, اتَّقِ fina fa innama nahnu bik. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding us, for we are as you are. إِنِ اسْتَقَمْتَ اسْتَقَمْنَا وَإِنِ اعْوَجَجْتَ اعْوَجَجْنَا If you remain straight, we will remain straight. If you are bent, then we will be bent. If you make your speech right, your actions will become right. Allah says, make your speech good and I will make your deeds good. In another place in the Quran, Allah very loving, lovingly tell us, وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Oh, my Prophet, tell all of my slaves. Allah is calling us our, Allah is talking to us so lovingly. Tell all of my slaves, يَقُولُ الَّتِهِ أَحْسَنُ Only say the thing that is best. 
Whenever they say it, they should say the best thing. Why? What's the reason? Inna shaytana yanzahu baynahum. You know shaitan? He's seeking to create divisions among you. He's seeking to disunite you. If we are not careful our, about our speech, every word that we utter, shaitan will take that word, he will exploit it, he will abuse it, and he will use that word to create further division and frictions and conflict among us. And that's what's happening. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best option is to remain silent. That's it. A, per, a person came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, man najah? What, is, what is salvation? What is nijat? What is salvation? And Prophet mentioned three, three things. Imsik alayka lisanika. Control your tongue. Wal yasa'aka baytuka. Let your home be sufficient for you. Whatever you have in your home, let that be sufficient for you. Wabki ala khati'ika. And weep over your sins. These three things. If you do these three things, you will reach salvation. Ma'az bin Jabbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I rode up to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet was riding, I was riding next to him, so much so close that my knees were touching the knees of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was an opportunity for me, there was no one around us. So I asked, Ya Rasulullah, tell me some of the deeds that will take me closer to Jannah and that will distance me from the fire of Jahannam. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma'az, you asked an amazing question. But despite of the greatness and the magnitude of this question, it is easy for someone whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. And then he starts mentioning all the beautiful things of Islam. Iman, Salah, Tahajjud, Sadqa, Khairat. He is mentioning all of these good deeds, beautiful deeds of Islam. And after giving Ma'az radiallahu ta'ala anhu this small sermon, he said to Ma'az radiallahu ta'ala anhu, should I tell you one thing, just one thing, that encompasses all these beautiful deeds that I have just mentioned. I will just tell you one thing, and that will cover everything else. And Ma'az Allah ta'ala anhu was amazed. So he said, Bala ya Rasulullah, why not? What is that thing, ya Rasulullah? Tell me. Prophet sallallahu put his fingers on his blessed tongue, and he pulls it out. And he said, Ma'az, just control this. Just control this. And Ma'az radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, will we be taken to task because of this thing? We will be asked questions because of this small thing. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma'az, I used to think you were the intelligent one. Hal nasu fin nari ala wujuhim illa hasaidu al what is, what, is there anything else that will fling people flat on their faces in the fire of Jahannam except what their tongues reap? This is the reason why, we'll be, why, why people will be flung into the fire of Jahannam, flat on their faces. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, this month of Ramadan, don't worry about anyone else. Guard your tongue, guard your tongue, and just work on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet said, Min husnil Islam il mar'i tarkuhuma la ya'nihi. From the excellence of one's iman is that he only minds his own business. That's it. He doesn't care about anyone else. He only minds his own business. A person came to Sufyan Sawri rahmatullah alayhi. He said, I have never seen Imam Abu Hanifa backbiting anyone. I have never seen Imam Abu Hanifa talking about anyone. And Sufyan Sawri Rahmatullah Alayhi said, Imam Abu Hanifa is too smart to give his good deeds to anyone. When you backbite, what happens? You tell me what happens. On the day of judgment, they will take away from you good deeds. So if you really hate someone, let me give you a tip. If you hate someone, will you give him your house or your car or the most prized possession that you have? Why are you giving your good deeds then? Why? A person came to Sufyan Sawri Rahmatullah Alayhi and he said, You know, I've heard these people talking bad about you. And Sufyan Sawri Rahmatullah Alayhi, you know what he did? He sent him a ball of dates. And he said to them, It has come into my notice that you were giving me your good deeds. And I did not find anything else to thank you except for this ball of dates. Please accept it from me. Next time you find out people are backbiting you, people are saying bad things about you, send them a box of chocolate. <laughs> Send them a candy bar and tell them, thank you very much for giving me your good deeds. What are they going to say to you? <coughs> Khalas, you have defeated them. Alhamdulillah. You have defeated them. They are not going to say anything. The only thing they will say to you is thank you. That's the only thing they will be able to say. So inshallah, in this month of Ramadan, let's guard our tongue. Let's fast with our tongue. Control our tongue so that this fasting will remain as a shield and it will protect us from the wrath and displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.